Well, um, I have to start that Afghanistan hasn't been a very easy country to do the humanitarian work for the last uh, quite few years, if not few decades. Um, but in spite of all the problems we have, it is not just the, the problem of uh, internal conflict or ar armed conflict. The terrain of Afghanistan, the geographical make of Afghanistan is not an easy place. For example, you go to a province and in the winter, most of the roads are closed. Uh, when the, all the roads are closed, then how could you get your help to those areas they needed the more? And so that's why, I mean, if you think of having warehouses everywhere, this is also impossible. So this is very important that one has to be prepared for everything in Afghanistan. Not just the Afghan Red Christian Society, but other charity workers or humanitarian workers also. You have to take in consideration the uh, armed conflict, um, severe winters, uh, closure of uh, of roads in some instances, and also um, the new phenomena that used to be a few years ago and now it has come back, the roadside uh, mines. We, uh, unfortunately, we are not, uh, we cannot choose. Uh, we do almost everything uh, from um, natural disaster to um, not so natural disaster, <laughs> which is a war disaster, and uh, and also returnees internally, um, uh, I mean internal refugees that because of conflict uh, they leave their areas. We have to work in all this, but we are not alone. Um, uh, if it's a conflict, we have ICRC next to us. Um, most of the time they help us, but sometimes um, we have to do it on our own. And also we have the Federation that helps us a lot with the natural disasters and also in the capacity um, building, capaci the training of our um, employees and uh, the volunteers. Um, we do everything, even the health. I mean, we are one of the biggest players in the health of the country. Um, whether it is the uh, health in emergency, whether it is our um, mobile clinics that we do most of the vaccinations because of the armed conflict, the Ministry of Health uh, may do all, most of their work through us and also the United Nations Agency of um, World Health um, Organization also does most of the implementation through us. So, and also we have to get involved in things um, which is bigger than proportion. Like we ha we have children in Afghanistan who are born with a hole in their hearts, um, and um, I used to get so many parents bringing these children. So I thought, okay. It's a new thing that I should help, but it, now we have from six to twelve child registered every day, and every day it's five days per week, and um, we need uh, three million dollars only for that. So we are doing almost everything. It's hard work. It is a hard work, um, but it's a v very worthy work because. Um, the, the Red Crescent is so lucky that it is appreciated immediately. Uh, people, they know the difference. They know that it's a voluntary work. They know that the money comes from people uh, who are like them. Just another person is helping. Another national society is helping. So it is really appreciated. And uh, because of the volunteers, uh, we do it so much ch cheaper and, and a little uh, coin runs much um, further than, yeah. than other people's uh, coins. So it is uh, very rewarding. I'm so happy that someone is asking about Marastun because it's such a forgotten matter, especially the national societies, they help us. Um, in their countries, the, the problems that we face in Marastun is done by, by governments. In Afghanistan, it's not such. It's still Marastun doing it. Marastun, in the language of Pashto, means 
a place to seek help from, mm -hmm. a place which helps you. Um, we have um, five milestones in Afghanistan, one in Kabul, Kandahar, uh, Herat, Jalalabad, and Mazar, five of them. And there we look after um, widows that they have very small children and they have absolutely nobody. They don't have a brother, father, brother-in-law, or anyone who could help them. So we bring these women, and then we encourage them to learn some literacy and also learn a skill. And meanwhile, we put their children um, at school, because some of these children, they are 10 years old, and they've never been to school. So we try to uh, raise their cap I mean, level so they will go to school with uh, almost the same age as themselves. Most of these women and most of these children are very, very, um, I mean, enthusiastic more than us that they want to learn and quickly uh, get better their situation, get better than what it is. And also we do something else that if I tell you that till a few months ago I thought we are doing a very little portion of this, we look after mentally disabled people, especially mentally disabled women. Till a few months ago, I thought that we are just taking a portion. I found out that we are the only one. This is scary. This is absolutely scary. Every day we have um, uh, people um, from the police or other official people that they bring a person who is just wandering in the street, that, that their uh, mental capacity is very low, and they bring them to, to us to look after them. Our uh, financially, and even from the capacity point of view, we are, we are just very, very limited. Uh, we cannot do all this, but we are the only one, and this is really bad. So we came to a conclusion that maybe uh, our branch of Herat, um, we will one day build uh, a purpose-built building to, to look after these people. And now there is another thing which is also is going to fall on uh, our shoulder. Number-wise, they are not uh, too big, but uh, from the point of view that how vulnerable they are, they're very vulnerable. These are the old people. In Afghanistan, the family used to look over their old. If they didn't have children, a nephew or a niece would do that. But now because of the war, because of the poverty, because of so many of our refugees outside, that these old people, they have nobody. Mm -hmm. And every winter you can see that one or two of uh, these old men are frozen in the streets of Kabul or other uh, cold cities. So this is another thing that I'm afraid that will be also uh, on our shoulder. We have lands. Potentially we later we could look after them. But the problem that I have today, because Marastun and that sort of work is not anymore in the, in the regular work of national society, mm. my partners, they, don't, they cannot help me. And for me, it's very difficult to raise the money for heart patients, for internal refugees, and also for these people. So we are a little bit in, uh, in trouble in that matter. Mm. So we could say that the Marastun is the only hope for a lot of people. Absolutely. For mentally disabled men and women, this is the only place for um, widows to change their situation, sometimes from a beggar from the street, and tomorrow is a seamstress to make dresses, or be a hairdresser, or, or, or a good baker. Um, this is the only place they have, and I'm very sorry to say that that this is the only place they have, but we have very limited, uh, I mean, uh, limited possibilities. My hope was that because the widows and the orphans and the people that they are mentally disabled, they fall under the category of zakat in the Muslim world, that the countries uh, in Islamic world, that they are very rich and they have plenty of money for this, that they should come forward and work with us. I'm not saying that they should just bring the money, but, but come and work for us. The same way that other national society, they come there and they work with us. And I think this is the best opportunity for them. And I tried so hard and I simply couldn't get their attention there.
If you think it's lots of help coming, the help is a lot. The problems are too big. This is the problem, mm -hmm. that every day we are facing uh, a new problem. We have more than three, um, three million uh, refugees still in Pakistan. We have uh, a little bit more than two million refugees in Iran, apart from ex I mean, internal refugees that are scattered all over. The problem is that the people inside Afghanistan for the last 13 years that I had so much hope that someone will come and do that, they, they didn't learn any job. It is not a question of just disasters. It's a question as we have jobless people, but they don't know what to do. I mean, the um, Gulf countries and some other countries, they have a quota for Afghan workers, but they need a trained butler, they need a trained chef, they need a trained driver. We don't have them. And this is a problem that my um, question and my surprise is that for the last 13 years, so much has been done in my country. But the most important thing that to teach people how to work, education wise, those people that they do, it's fine. They are really doing well. But I'm talking those people that they have lost the opportunity because of the war or because of the many problems that they have lost the opportunity of education, the middle people who are the majority, just to learn a skill and, uh, and do work. And with the, this will have two um, benefits. One, um, they will not be a poor um, population, burden on the government, burden on us, you or anyone who help us. The second important thing is that they will not be encouraged or pulled towards insurgency because they have a job, because they already have an earning for their family. And the, the children of a person who can work is definitely goes to school. And the children of people who have no job, they are exactly like the same person. Roads are built, which is for people. Um, hospitals are built, uh, built, schools are built. There are lots of things that it has been built for the people, but they are very forgotten spots. And one of the forgotten spots is that uh, there are a big majority of people that they have lost opportunity to be educated, but they need skills, so we look after them. And the other thing, which is also forgotten, is to, um, to do some sort of training with the people with disability, for blind, for uh, deaf, for people who cannot talk. They are still considered the outsiders. We didn't, we c we didn't have the opportunity. We didn't uh, prepare an opportunity for them to, to learn. Today, blindness is no more um, a disability in most of the countries they are almost normal part of the society, but not in my country. So my question is that how could, with all these billions of dollars coming, that we forgot some spots which, which is not nice? Well, they have been extremely generous. I mean, the whole world has been so generous. Look. I mean, the problems you see in the world, in Syria, in Africa, Iraq, and so on and so forth. There are so many problems, but they still didn't, didn't uh, lose a sight of Afghanistan. And of course, when you have more problems in the world, more disasters, more wars, um, the money becomes and less and less. So we need those kind of approaches that little money could do a very positive jobs. And that is when you consult with the people of the country themselves, not to waste money on new offices, not to waste money on buying new cars, but to promote, encourage, and build this, the uh, institution that e they exist in the country. I will give you an example of Afghan uh, Red Crescent Society. We, we already had Marastun for years and years. 
Marastun is in fact older than the Red Crescent itself. But hundreds and hundreds of other NGOs were built in Afghanistan and the money went there instead of, um, I mean, uh, helping Marastun. Mm -hmm. And now, where are they? They have all gone because they, because of the insecurity. They cannot live in Afghanistan. Their offices are closed. Their cars are, mm -hmm. <laughs> are sold. And uh, the Marastun is exactly the way it used to be. And if those NGOs, those people, they came and helped us because Marastun is a permanent part of Afghanistan uh, to build that and to care for the widows, care for the um, orphans, care for the mentally disabled people, now we would have had something permanent in Afghanistan. I'm an optimistic uh, by nature. When, uh, when the Russians invaded Afghanistan, everyone was so pessimistic, they thought it's finished and gone. Not even one second I thought that it was finished and gone. And I was, I was proved right. Now I have, um, I'm saying this with my heart, not so much with my head, that um, I see um, a good future for Afghanistan. A new government has emerged. Um, we have a very competent uh, president who, uh, who's an educated and uh, a person who has worked in international uh, agencies so that he knows how to uh, how to use money in a, in a correct way and also next to him we have uh, a person another person who uh, has always been with Afghanistan who has always uh, who grew up with the problems of Afghanistan they know exactly where the money should go and how to help the people and um, civil war is one of the darkest and ugliest uh, part of uh, our history. So with them both to come together and form one government, my hope is that uh, civil war hopefully soon will be a forgotten thing in the country. One thing I wanted to, uh, to say to all national societies that uh, the work that we are doing is the most fantastic way to do it. I mean, we have um, a sisterhood or brotherhood, whatever you call it. Um, we are a family that uh, we know each other very well, no matter in which part of the world we live. But um, as soon as a country like Afghanistan, Syria, Bangladesh, or wherever, uh, we have a problem, immediately that becomes the closest family to us, and we all rush to help. And this is something that it is worthwhile um, to be publicized more. I think our work is not publicized the way that we work. I think uh, most people see us with an eye as if we are um, a museum piece. Um, the movement of Red Cross, Red Crescent has become extremely modern. We are always the first that we reach somewhere, and we are always the last that we live, uh, leave someplace. And part of us is there because every country has a national society. So most of the work which is not finished, it will carry on.